Hello, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and welcome to Linux Back to Basics Episode 4. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing two commands in particular, su, which stands for substitute user, and also sudo, which is substitute user do. I say sudo, it's probably sudo, uh, just in keeping with what it stands for, but these commands as their name would suggest allow you to execute commands as another user on the system so how Linux works as far as users go is it by default you're going to have what's known as the root user the root user is equivalent to administrator on a Windows system he has access to everything on the system read write access to everything um, as far as the Linux computer goes, he's pretty much God. <laughs> uh, and then you're going to have your user account, hopefully. If you don't have a user account and you're just using root, I highly, highly recommend that you create yourself a user account that does not have the elevated root permissions. And then use these commands I'm about to explain to you as a way of executing commands with the elevated root permissions. Because if you're logged in as root all the time, that's security vulnerability on your computer is essentially what it boils down to and it's not recommended for Linux at all people on Windows can get away with it um, on Linux you probably still could get away with it but it's not something you're supposed to do so su substitute user by default it takes one parameter but if you don't pass it that parameter it's going to go to root as the standard uh, I worded that weirdly, sorry. I should say it substitute user takes one parameter and if by default it's root. So if I leave this blank and press enter it's going to ask for a password. Now this password is the password of the account that you are trying to substitute into not your user password. So if I enter my root password you'll see that I am now logged in as root. And from here, I can execute commands as root. When you're done in the root shell, you can simply type in exit, and it will drop you back into your user shell. Why would you want to do this? Well, certain commands are going to require root permission to run. For example, package managers, by and large, if I were to try and update my package database using Pacman, that's what the dash SYY does, it's going to alert me that I can't do it unless I'm logged in as root. So in this case, say I really want to update my package database, if I use su and enter in my root password, I enter the root shell, and from here, I can update my package database. It's a shortcut so that you don't have to log out and then log back in as root every time you want to execute a command such as this. The other thing that it's good for is editing text files. So essentially, as Douglas, I have the by default permissions to write to anything located within my user's home directory. Outside of that, usually not. And a lot of important configuration files are located, for example, in Etsy. So all of this stuff, I need to have root permissions to edit. If I were to exit out of my root shell again and go into Etsy and attempt to edit, for example, pacman.com. You'll see here it says read only. This is because I don't have write permissions on this file. So any changes that I make, if I try and save them, I'm not allowed to. And even though it says you can override, if you try and override it, it still won't work because I need root permissions to save to this file. And sometimes, for example, um, the v, the uh, sudoers file, which involves sudo, I'll talk about it in just a moment, I can't even look at this with my standard user permissions. It's, it's not even read-only, <laughs> so you have to have root to do that. If I were to log into my root shell, you'll note that I can indeed see uh, see the sudoers file.
and I can also edit the um, what was I looking at pacman.com yeah it doesn't say read only anymore any changes I make will be kept so for example I could oh what's a change I need to make anyway uh, I won't change anything but you get the idea of course the problem with substitute user is that you need that user's password to use it and say you have a computer with multiple users on online well, on the computer but you don't necessarily want to give them your root password for various reasons in that case you'd want to use sudo substitute user do now what sudo is going to let you do is execute a command a single command as another user using that user's password so in this case I need to enter Douglas's password and it's going to execute the command as root and once the command is finished drop me back into my user shell again unlike in sue where you can just say alright I want to sue as uh, tell you what yeah if I were to sue into root you can use sudo to execute commands for, as any user so in this case I'm going to do sudo and then you use the tack u to indicate that you want to execute it as a different user and type in that user's username and then you type in your command and of course because I'm trying to execute it as Douglas and it requires root privileges even though I'm logged in as root it's not going to execute you're probably not going to use this functionality of it very often especially for just your average user on a Linux desktop or laptop but it has its uses especially on the server administration side of things in order to use sudo you need to configure that sudoers file that I mentioned earlier and there are two ways to do this there's the right way and the wrong way I'd usually use the wrong way the truth to be told but uh, and I'm going to use sudo to edit it if you are by default not included in this file you're going to have to log in as root to make this change you can either use su or log into a root shell not log into a root shell, log into the root account but the lines you want are right here now this is vsudo vsudo is a text, it uses vi and what it's going to do is before I save it it will scan the document to make sure that I didn't make any syntax errors which will break sudo I usually don't do it this way just because I don't make changes that are particularly dangerous syntactically but the important lines here are the user privilege specification. Type in your username and then just copy this line exactly. What this line is going to let you do is execute any command on the system as any user on the system using your user password, which is what you want for just everyday use is perfectly sufficient. You don't have to get too deep into configuring it. I'll do a video on configuring sudo at some point in the near future but just to give you a general idea of some additional stuff that you can do you can for example set it so that any members of a group can execute a command you can specify that okay you can execute the command without using your password and specify what command you're talking about uh, allow users in a group or an entire group access to sudo you can do things like that and if you're not entirely sure what I'm talking about when I say users and groups and permissions uh, that's gonna be the next video so hang tight for that okay so let's just quickly recap what we've gone over today we've gone over the substitute user command which allows you to swap into any user account on the system using their password and 
enter that user's shell to execute commands as that user. Once you're done, type in exit to quit out of that shell and drop back into your user shell. The sudo command is similar to su, except it allows you to switch to another user's permissions for running just one command. Uh, that's the syntax on it. If you don't enter their username, it defaults to root, of course. And in order to use it, you have to make sure that your username is in the sudoers file. And again, the syntax on that is right here. Okay, so that's all that I have for you today. If you found this useful, please like, subscribe, whatnot. Uh, I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, please, if you have any questions, feedback, comments, leave them in the section below. I'll try and get to them in a timely manner. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you in the next episode of Back to Basics on users, groups, and permissions. Things are going to start to get a little complicated here. See you soon.